Hello and welcome to the ROH Podcast, Episode 6. As always, I am Caden Katanis. And joining me this week on the show for all your ROH and Zelda discussion are my revolving door of cohorts, comrades, and colleagues. The Mana Bear of ROH. Hi. And the Dirty Llama himself, Rio. What? <laughs> <laughs> Llamas are awesome. How's everybody doing? Oh, man. Work's busy. <laughs> life's busy. Well, actually, actually, life is not so busy, but work's busy. Hmm. It's Easter. Come on. It's chocolate time. Yeah, yeah, life will get a little bit busier in a couple of days. Of course. That's how life is around Easter. I, I guess I don't celebrate Easter, but that's beside the point. Anyway... Before we get into the atomic nucleus of this podcast, I would like to remind everyone to vote for us on top RP sites. I know it's the start of the new month and everyone is psyched up for ROH 7. Trust me, I am too. But we're down to 17th place! Holy crap! Yes! 17th place! You guys need to get on the ball and vote, and vote often. Now, if you aren't sure where to go to vote, then I'll tell you, because, seriously, 17th place. Hit the golden triforce at the top of the page, or the banner at the bottom that says, in clear letters, top RP sites, vote daily to vote for us. With enough votes, we can get back on the front page, and hopefully move to a decent spot on that list, because, again, 17th place. Why? Now, we of the council have been pretty busy getting... People's profiles checked, making sure things behind the scenes are ready for the big opening of ROH, which is happening on the 15th, as of this moment. That said, there is something that is coming up on 7 that we all know and love, and we're going to reveal it here on the podcast. We're doing an opening festival. Surprise! (laughs) Yes, exciting. Well, we haven't gotten... Everything quite finalized as of this recording, which is Friday night. There are some things we can talk about and things we can discuss. Uh, The festival is set to take place in Long Lawn Town, for example. And it will be called the Long Lawn Trade Festival. Apparently, we will be trading cows and other goods and luxuries because why not? What about llamas? I I don't think there's llamas in the Zelda canon, man. Okay. You never know. I just didn't want to get traded. This, you know. This isn't the Sims. <laughs> Not everything's about llamas, man. I, I'm just looking out for me. I don't want to get traded. It, we'll keep you notified. Appreciate that. <laughs> Speaking of the festival, it's going to be starting a week after ROH began. So, tentatively, it will be the 22nd of April. Keep your eye out for that. Like previous festivals, there will be some activities to, for you to participate in. A couple of games. Thankfully, no mini maze. I remember how insane that was last time we did it. Oh, running that thing was a pain in the butt, too. I can imagine. <laughs> I feel, <laughs> We lost many good people during that maze. It ain't coming back. Neither are they. <laughs> well, that's the Im- implication there, but thank you for being spot on about it. Also, as with previous festivals, there will be a few areas open to mingle and talk to people. And I'm pretty sure we're going to have that annual festival dance. Because what kind of festival would it be if there wasn't a place to dance? A bad one, that's what. <laughs> that should be fun for uh, Caden. I was just thinking that, because he can like pull out his whole Playboy fantasy out there. I, I didn't really consider that, but yeah, he can be the playboy rich kid that can just pop into the dancing floor. Maybe I'll pull a uh, John Travolta. Oh dear. <laughs> yes. No doubt for that when the dance comes around, because I will probably do something like that just for the hell of it. And everybody will run away. Hey, for charisma. For <laughs> charisma. That's got to mean something. Probably not, but... Mana, are you aware that Caden has a brother slash wingman? No! Does he? He... Well, he will. Oh, dear. Care to guess who that will be? Oh, uh, I want to say Cowan. I, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do. I don't know why. Well, he might look like me in real life, but he is not my brother on ROH. 
Though, yeah. that, that would be a good one. Would you like to say who it is, Rio? Well, you're talking to him. Really? I am the wingman. Oh my goodness, this is going to be hilarious. Hilarity is the goal here. Well, I, I expect to be very amused then. <laughs> I will do my best to make sure you are not disappointed. Same here, which, well, of course, we're talking about me here. I mean, have I ever disappointed? But... You never disappoint. Well, we might talk about Caden a little bit more later, but for now, let's go back to the festival. As for everything else, there'll be a sparring ground. There's going to be the always popular fortune teller. Oh, that one's going to be even funner this year. Oh, I, I can... know, I've heard story, like the two who might be running it might be running it as two characters. So, Oh, wow. There'll I... be two in there, and they're going to be bantering back and forth with each other. I personally can't wait to see that. <laughs> that should be very entertaining. Mm. Well, especially with the two who are running it. It'll be very hilarious. No spoilers. Nope. <laughs> hilarious almost sounds like an understatement. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to give too much away. It'll be too easy if you guess then. Exactly. As far as the festival goes, what are y'all thoughts? Exactly. Everybody always gets excited for the festival. Like, I'm excited for it. It's something new, and especially with it becoming the first thing, at least we're all going to be able to mingle with each other. It's not going to be that whole separation gap that we were getting in 6. At least that's my thoughts. Oh, definitely. I, I mean, there's going to be people that's going to be RPing separately for the first week and kind of getting their character established, but nothing is going to be too ingrained yet that we all can't meet and hang out and have fun and get drunk and dance like crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I've, of course, I was. I actually had Soren in the last. I guess that was the last festival. No, that no. was. No, we had another one after oh. the Snowhead. I missed that one. You did. Yes. Oh, well. Was it good? Caden danced with uh, Briar when when Briar was Lady Rose. It was yes. hilarious. Ah. And then they had a snowball fight, and then. Skylar blew up the place. Yes. I, I do remember something about that, yes. So, yeah. They're always fun. Oh, well, it are. used to be like a tradition that every festival had to get attacked. Until the last one I was at. Well, Sky didn't want anybody attacking that one. She was, like, threatening anyone who thought of it. And then she just, she attacked the next one herself. Yep. <laughs> She Good looking want, out, Sky. She didn't want anyone to ruin her fun. Can you blame her? I I mean, not really, no. Exactly. It'd be interesting to see if somebody tries to wreck this one. Especially from the start. I'm almost ex- I almost expect somebody to do it. Well I, my main character, I really wanted to I, I had thoughts, and I, I didn't really have anything set in stone, but I had thoughts of trying to start this one off with a very interesting predicament event uh, I didn't have anything planned for the festival itself so I don't know we'll see we shall see I for one just can't wait to see all the characters that will mingle here and go off and do their own thing and see how they all grow and evolve do you think anyone's going because it's a tradition attack the end of the festival at the end of the festival I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't completely discount it. I, mean, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's just say that if somebody did decide to attack it and then... Yeah. Es- especially since you take into the fact that some characters will be starting out with, you know, a halfway substantial amount of power that they would actually be able to cause some kind of commotion. Yeah, you're right, and... And honestly, it wouldn't be a festival if it didn't end with a bang. Let's be honest here. Gotta have fireworks some form or fashion. Oh, yeah. I, I, I certainly agree with that. Now, there is a little bit of bad news <coughs> to finish off festival talk. We had discussed an idea of doing two festivals. One for seven, one for six. The seven one would probably start. The six, one on six would probably be the end of it. Or near the end. But due to Skylar's uh, uh, schedule, who she is the one that does all these festivals, so if you do talk to her, thank her for all of them, she didn't have the time or patience or ability to do one for the end of six. So 
None for six, if you are wondering, ahead of time. I honestly think that's a good move. Yeah, so do I. Having two going at the same time, or close to it, well, not a good idea. I know, one's supposed to be at the end of June. I got that. Not even right. that, just the fact that one is would be, you know, basically lifeless. Yeah, because six is going to probably be very, very quiet the last month or two. The, I mean, a few characters probably will end their storylines or whatnot, but for the most part... Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, there's going to be a few, I know, that are supposed to be ending. Like, I know me and Kiro's characters are going to be ending in six before we move over to seven. Mm-hmm. Right, some people are still having fun with the characters they have there, and there's nothing wrong with that. I personally... I, I, as soon as I found out we were moving to seven, I lost all interest in trying to continue with Soren. Right. Yeah. Right. Just, and despite the fact that it would have been awesome had he run into Skylar again. Well, there's always time. Uh, as I said, lost mm-hmm. all interest, and yeah. I don't even know if Sky has the time to do anything like that. So yeah, the fact that we're getting a vessel now is kind of amazing. But nine on six, unfortunately, which. Good thing, but it would have been nice at least. Eh, I think that's the best way to end that. All right. Mm -hmm. I was going to say we could end six with a bang. Oh. Someone come through and drop a meteor on everything or something. (laughs) Flood the place. Flood it. Oh, Oh, yeah. I'm I'm still expecting orgy. I'm just going to let that out right there. (laughs) If it doesn't end in orgy, I would be slightly disappointed. I'll probably be disappointed, I know. I suspect you will. (laughs) Sadly. Moving on. If you aren't aware yet, profile grading has opened up for ROH 7. It opened up earlier this week, and already we've gotten quite a few profiles transferred over to the news site, along with some new characters from those that have already been on 6 and all that. Well, um, some of the characters, as I said, that have moved over, some of them are actually, I think, ROH 6 versions of their characters just moved over, probably a little different. Some are just reimagined versions of characters that were on 6 and don't know that 6 was a thing, and it's, we will and probably will just be going on like they have. If you've been on ROH before, you probably know how this goes. And, of course, new characters are popping up from some of our some people that have been around forever they've made new characters mana you and i along with other scribes have been doing a lot of profile grading with these characters and we've gotten through most of them even though some are still popping up and we've been kind of reading along with some of them hopefully you rio have, have you've been reading a few of these profiles as well i certainly hope so or else this conversation won't go very far this way i glanced at a few yes i'm certainly glad of that are there any profiles that you like to see that you are looking forward to seeing being RP'd or just kind of like the way the character history went? Mana, would you like to start? All right, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna say I'm excited for Briar to come back only because he's gonna have all his memories from six, and the way he's doing it is gonna be quite amusing. Like his whole history has changed. Like from what I on this profile. He's a spoiled rich kid, and he's going to be taking over Seven's, like, entire life. And our uh, number six, uh, Briar, certainly didn't have any of this effect. So it'll be interesting to see how Obbs plays him up. Hmm. That will be very interesting. Uh, Anybody else? Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm looking at all the screen right now. Hmm. I'll come back. If I have another one. <laughs> All right. Um, Many times. Uh, Rio, you got any? Uh, Briar was one of the ones I looked at, too, for that very reason. Um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how that happens. I personally was not a fan of this idea of characters warping to an alternate reality. I, I don't know. I, 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 I would not have done it, but... Yeah. Well, you know, I'm just me. It was a council decision, and so we'll run with it. And I'm assuming there's a bunch of people excited about it, so I hope they enjoy it. I also have looked at uh, Skylar's profile and Caden's profile because, uh, like me, they are sort of the same character but in a different setting, different 
type, you know, different things affecting them. And I find it interesting to see how they are different from, like, the Skylar and Caden of ROH 6 or ROH 4. Uh, just seeing the differences in the in these, what is I would assume is sort of the same character, but how they develop differently is uh, interesting. Because I know, despite the fact that I used the same character from ROH 1 to 2 and then to 4 the circumstances surrounding him and the way he developed was drastically different different in each version. And I'm going to be Caden's brother, so I kind of needed to know what's <laughs> up there. <laughs> of course. Of course, yeah. I have changed Caden around a bit. Much different Caden than of ROH past, which was kind of purposely because I kind of wanted to do something a little different with Caden this time around. I didn't want him to be a generic general fighter dude I kind of went with playboy rich kid carefree goofy guy different is good though like you know Rio was like a typical hero in ROH1 midway through ROH2 I tried to turn him into more of a villain and you know then in ROH well actually this ROH I tried to make him a lot darker still essentially a good person but a much darker personality as for me personally uh, I've looked I've been grading a lot of profiles I think I don't know I won't I wouldn't say I've graded the most or I've looked at the most but I know I've certainly looked at my fair share of them and there's a lot of them that are just really really interesting to me Thanatos's character on R white 7 Abraxas which is completely different from any... Well, I wouldn't say completely different, but he's different from a lot of characters he's had on previous ROHs, as far as I know. If you if you don't know, he's part of the Sheikah division. He's got this, I would say, flickering ability. He's got a very interesting history, and it's it doesn't look like he's going to go for the Ar- Arkin bad guy this time around. At least, not to me. And... Honestly, the person behind the character, I've always liked what he writes and what he does, and I can't wait to see how this character develops and interacts with others. Uh, the, other, uh, the other one that really stuck out to me, probably because of how, well, not because of how different it is, but it's a character that was on 6 very early on that is coming back. It's uh, the Gerudo King. And it looks like he's going to try to be a pretty major character on this ROH compared to ROH 6 when he was kind of there and disappeared and didn't do much. Thoughts on these characters? Going back to Thanatos' character, like you said, he's he's always really good at character development, especially if he has the tools to work with. Like, I know the Archon later on, it seemed like he kind of got slowed down to a one-man show, or one-god show. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do a lot of development when you're constantly, uh, don't have any other kind of interactions or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, if, if he can, if he's given the opportunity, that character should be very interesting. And, uh, a Tamaris... Uh, well, just having a Gerudo King that's not Ganondorf should be very interesting if it's allowed to play out and develop. Yeah, and Atemris has already got several Gerudos on his side, so activity shouldn't be a problem for that character. Mm-mm. Especially considering one of the people who's going to be RPing with him is Denali. Or well, Denali? I think it's Denali. Uh, yes, yeah, Denali. She, Denali. I think she always said that to me that way. And if I'm getting it wrong, she'll probably stab me or something. I know, she's going to scream at me, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, Danny, whatever. Danny, right. <laughs> Let's just go with Danny, yes. yes. Well, because she's going to be a major player against Hero's character. Yeah. And, and speaking of Danny's character, I, I, I kind of like the way she kind of, I like the way she go, uh, she's going with it. It's a little different than ROH 6 Danny, but different is good as rio said earlier thoughts on actually Hmm? i'm sorry go ahead mana i was gonna say i'll kind of hold my reservation on that one because her her history is different but her personality is pretty much the same so 
I kind of expect her behavior to be very similar to number six. Not particularly a bad thing, but Rio, what were you going to say? I was going to just going to say Denali was probably the biggest character whenever I returned recently that caught my eye, and I couldn't really say why, but had I been given the opportunity, I would have probably enjoyed RPing with Denali. So, who knows? Maybe either Syndicate or uh, what's his name? Oh, Caden's brother. Cordell. Cordell. Cordell will run into Denali. Wow, you named a character and you can't even think of his name. <laughs> Gives me a lot of high hopes for Caden's brother. I named him like a week ago and I haven't done any thinking about it since, hardly. For shame. For shame. Hey. He's he's going to be a designated fourth character, sort of. Wow. Even though he's going to be my second character. But I won't get into that. Right. Well, that will be to be seen. <laughs> no spoilers. I have high hopes for Syndicate. All I'll right. just leave it that way. Yeah. A lot of, those characters are all very, very interesting. I can't wait to see them going forward. Any more thoughts on characters from either of y'all? Everybody make good characters, RP well, have lots of good interactions, develop well, and let's have fun. Couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> I couldn't say it again. I I am glad because... Uh, Mana, any last words? I can't really think of anything because I'm, like, I'm sitting here kind of thinking, there's actually not many characters that have transferred over their memories from Six. I think there's only a handful. A lot of people have just taken the same name and recreated them, so that kind of a interesting take on all of everything. I like that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I agree. And that's how it's usually been done in the past and we're doing it a little differently this time around. I I can't say one way or another if it's a good idea or not. I mean, eventually it's probably not going to matter in the long run, but short term it's going to be pretty big. All right, if nothing else is to be said about that, I we can move on to the Zelda topic of this week. There has been a lot of bosses through the Zelda series, as we all know. A lot of mini-bosses as well. Some mini-bosses have became bosses. Some bosses have become mini-bosses. Some bosses and mini-bosses have only appeared in one game. It's kind of weird how that happens. It's also kind of weird how they recycle bosses like crazy. I mean, seriously, Nintendo, get off your ass. We want to see something different every so often. (laughs) But... We've all played our fair share of games here, and I'm pretty sure we all got our personal favorite bosses or our stories about boss fights or anything like that. So I want to know from you two, what would you say is your favorite boss or mini boss fight from a Zelda game? When uh, Caden first put this question to me, I knew I had an instant response, and it didn't take me but a few instances to remember what that was. Uh... And that would be the uh, Twin Rova battle on Ocarina of Time. I, I I don't know. It just always always had fun. First reflecting ice back into the fire witch, and and then the fire back into the ice witch, and then when they actually combine into Twin Rova and start firing the different energies, and you have to absorb them into the mirror shield. I just always found that really fun. And then firing the mirror shield like it was a flaming cannon. Is that really what you thought was interesting? Or is it the fact that the two ugly hags turned into like this hot babe? No, I was actually... That, <laughs> that she still did not quite... Uh, no. In if, comparison if she, if she, to what she started out as. It, well, in, in comparison, sure. But I wasn't comparing. I, no, she... No. Well, we're also... <laughs> We're also talking about Ocarina of Time, the blocky triangle boobs of this generation. Exactly. I mean, when you've got, I mean, when the you play the Zelda's lullaby and this redheaded thing with these absolute spikes for boobs pops out. I mean, it's it's along these these lines talking about the graphics and everything. When I first got Ocarina of Time and started playing. And I'm running around the little Kokiri village, and I run up the, uh, I'm up on that, kind of that bridge that connects those two pillars, and I run over to that little girl, and she's like, press the up C button to look in first person view, or whatever she says, and I was like, oh, okay, so I look down at the controller, 
and I slap that button and look up, and the view all of a sudden just zooms right into her flat, pointy face or whatever. And I, I think I literally screamed because it scared me so much. Because her face just comes flying at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, I love the games to test, but the graphics, they haven't aged quite as well as some games. Which, I mean, it, it was awesome at first. Because, I mean, remember, this is the first 3D console. The first 3D yeah. Zelda game. That too. But I mean, I just mean in general. The console itself was the first 3D console, and then you have the first Zelda game for that. It, it was a big deal. It was. I, I agree. And I mean, the game still looks good now. It's just not. Um, let's just say that the uh, 3D versions on the 3DS were well needed. I haven't played them. I, I I've seen some let's plays that look pretty nice. I would highly recommend, based off what I've seen. I, I probably will get Majora's Mask because Majora's Mask was one of my favorite Zelda games. Right. Uh, Any other bosses, Rio? Uh. Going back to topic. Favorite bosses. Favorite bosses or uh, mini bosses? Let's see. The Aquamentus on the Legend of Zelda was really cool because you could just stand there, fire your swords, and there was never any danger. Right. Very easy, boss. Also, no, the dragon didn't turn into this beautiful woman. That might that might have been the reason I liked it. <laughs> okay. In case, in case man, I was wondering. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mana, no, do, do, <laughs> okay, Rio. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say, uh, you know, most of the Zelda games I've played, like enough to really remember or the older ones so like there might be some of the newer ones that i enjoyed but i, I don't remember them as well right i'm kind of in the same boat mana do you have any favorites all right this is going to be kind of an interesting one considering i don't like majora's mask i actually really liked fighting is it goat or yes goat? goat. Oh, yes goat was fun. oh I loved... That was, like, my favorite one I'd actually do, like, every day. Because I actually enjoyed the boss battle on that one. And I did not like Majora's Mask. But that was the one boss I would always go back in and just fight. Because the whole rolling around and gaining speed and turning into a big spiky ball was fun. It really was. Oh, I agree. Goat is probably my favorite fight from that game. Yeah, like, any other ones in Majora's Mask were just tedious. Like, I hated... Georg and I, I can't remember the stupid worm's name. Twin Lord. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the whole giant's mask was cool, but he was still a pain in the ass. The giant's mask was awesome, except for the fact that you could only use it in that one room. Yeah, I think that's why that one doesn't, like, I don't like that one as much. Because you could only use the giant's mask in the one room. Uh, uh, I would say my favorite. I actually would have to say it's a mini boss that has always been my favorite, and that was the Iron Knuckle in Ocarina of the Time. Ooh, that was fun. I liked that one. As adult Link, to yeah. be, be more specific, because there is a child Link. To, to, to save Naburu? I, I believe so, yeah. Oh, yeah one, I know there were, there were actually several Iron Knuckles, but you're referring to the one that Naburu was captive in. Uh, let's go with that one. I mean, they're all essentially the same. Except yes. As the as adult link, they are all essentially the same anyway. But yeah, that one has the most storyline significance. So yes, let's go with that one. <laughs> I I would say yeah. I mean, it was a very difficult <laughs> fight, but not painstakingly difficult. The other boss that I thought was interesting was from Twilight Princess, the Star Lord. He was a good boss battle that I enjoyed. Even though the top was useless in every other freaking place. Oh boy, don't even get me started on that damn top. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Star Lord. That was a fun bat boss battle though. It was It was good. I, that's yeah. probably one of the few I remember from Twilight Princess. Yeah, I can't really remember any yeah. other one. Uh, I remember fighting the monkey with the big butt. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Good boss fights. 
The only other one that I can think of favorite boss battle, maybe Dark Link and Ocarina of Time. Oh, that gave me nightmares as a kid. <laughs> Dark Link on Adventure of Link was a much more difficult challenge. Unless you knew the glitch. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> yep. The game itself was difficult, but it was fun. Very fun. We've talked about that game several times on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a great game. Play it if you haven't already. Great music too. But I digress. Any more discussion? Favorite bosses? Mini bosses? Oh, I got one. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. The I don't know if I don't, either one of you played Link Between Worlds? Not yes. yet. I have. I like the Gemisaur King. Gemisaur or Gemisaur? I can't remember how it's pronounced, but I played it and it's I played it like right after it came out and went through it and I haven't touched it since, so my memory's a little shaky on it. He's like he's basically the Helmosaur, but he's called the Gemisaur because he spews out gems. I seem ah, to remember that. I remember the Helmosaur came. Fight's exactly the same, it just he spews out gems and it looks pretty. <laughs> ah I see. That was a good fight, I'll give you that. And link uh, link to the past. Yeah, I do kinda remember it happening i don't remember much more i actually enjoyed a link between worlds me mostly too. because it it reminded me of a link to the past and because it, it, the control scheme was well done on the 3ds uh, i did not like um what was it phantom hourglass oh god no the control scheme on that was incredibly too wonky and then i did i refused to play spirit tracks because really trains no yeah. So, no sorry for those of y'all that actually enjoyed it. It may be a good one, but I, I refuse to play it. Uh, <laughs> a Link Between Worlds did it right. I, I have no opinion one way or another. I've, I've heard things, and that's all, I've, all I know. Any last comments? I, I can't really think of any other boss. I was trying to think of some of the other 2D game bosses that I really enjoy it, and I don't know. I'm drawing a blank right now. Oh, um, I think I have one that might have been fun, if I remembered it really well. Okay. The uh, I think it's going to be in Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. Probably the, what was it, like a Sky Temple or something? Oh, I'm trying to remember the name. Where you get the second claw shot. Was that the one where you fought some kind of a dragon with a claw on the end of his tail? Yes. No, wait. What the hell is that one? I'm, get, I'm just looking at a picture. I'm, I'm assuming that's where it came from. I really don't know. I'm, no, I'm pretty sure. That might have been... I have no idea. Or was that in Skyward Sword? On that note, I think we will be moving on to the last bit of this podcast. The always entertaining, always fun, dramatic post reading. I have a post. From... I was say, when did you get a post? <laughs> I didn't prepare one of these, so. No, it's yeah. only one one post. Nay, sent one sent one in from the topic beginning of the end in the Underwood. Uh, this is the first one, uh, the first post in this one. It's a, apparently a dream sequence, if you will. The Zorn warrior had retired to a bunk room, which she decided to claim as her own. There was little there by way of furniture, save a lantern on a desk and a small bed. Zemo was more tired than she was willing to admit after the last few days of planning and executing Theras Coop. Coop. Coo. <laughs> executing <laughs> Theras Coo. Sustaining her injury and sparred with Jack. The last was not a life-threatening situation, and she had given it gusto. But another long night's sleep would probably be good for her. Simo fell onto her bed and let it whisk her off into the land of dreams. A dark abyss. The woman floating there, no light nor distinguishable silhouette appeared under her gaze. She was submerged. She couldn't tell. Oh, she could tell, rather. That much from her rhythmically kicking legs, fin flap skirt rippling, 
What the hell is that word? <laughs> <laughs> Old Nar. Old Nar fans. Seriously, you L N A R. Old Nar. What the hell does that stand for? Old Nar fans loose and flowing around her. She may not have been able to see them, but she could feel the presence of her body, and it was certainly in the deep. That's probably supposed to be lunar. <laughs> It's, you know, it probably should have been lunar, but I'm saying Unar. Well, I, I googled Ulnar fins, and it come up, did you mean lunar fins? <laughs> what is lunar fins? What the hell does that even mean? Uh, Night it's fins? A club. It's a scuba club. I'd rather this be Scuba Steve. <laughs> The ocean then? Her mind instantly went to the warning she had received as a child and never swam too far into the open ocean. There is not there. There is not there. What? That's what it says. There is not there, but enough darkness for even one of Zora kind to drown in. Somewhere in the endless abyss could lurk a massive predator who could gulp her whole. Compensating for natural blindness with a sonic vision that Zora could not emulate. Floating still would accomplish nothing, however. She knew she needed to move before long, and the natural direction in which to do so was up, up, I say, up. Her issue, however, was in not knowing exactly where up was. Perhaps it was down. Maybe it was left or the right. We're not sure, damn it. Too late, I realized I did not mute sounds on this Skype. <laughs> and that was probably heard. Damn it to hell. Son of a bitch. <laughs> there was something especially wrong with her Ataloth, Ataloth organs, and a woman could not determine her relation to gravity in the water. Not that it ma mattered too much. She couldn't fucking breathe in water anyway. She wouldn't have to drown. Or I guess she could breathe in water. <clears throat> Note to self, turn off sound. <laughs> I might have to say that again once more without the sounds in the background. And no, <laughs> to answer the question. I'm going to start back on that paragraph because simply, yeah. Floating still would accomplish nothing, however. She knew that she needed to move along before long, and the natural direction in which she was to do so was up. Her issue, however, was in not knowing exactly where up was. There was something especially wrong with the autolith organs, and the woman could not determine her relation to gravity in the water. Suddenly, panic struck her, and she chose the direction at random, praying to the goddesses and Lord Jabu Jabu that she is, was not swimming even deeper into the abyss. Well, well, wait, well, actually, why was she worried about that? It's not like she could drown. I mean, yeah, there's predators around, probably, but she's not drowning. I, I mean, seriously. Something brushed up against her, something coarse to the touch, but also carrying the warmth of, of life. Good old, considering she was in the ocean, uh, there probably wouldn't be that much warmth, would it? I mean, I, 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 don't think so. I, I don't know. She reached out to grab whatever it was, knowing full well that it might be some predator of the depths which could inhale her without a thought, but not being able to fight the overwhelming urge. It also could have been a certain other predator that Chris Hansen would have to come and protect her from, but it's going too far into this. <laughs> Suddenly, light dazzled her eyes and revealed the figure's appearance. A river Zor, almost monstrous in appearance, with a body covered in burns as bad or worse than her own. Deep, dark green scales, red eyes and fangs, yet those held familiarly behind, beyond the burns. Father! The woman's... <laughs> <laughs> what? what was so funny? <laughs> what, 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 what was so funny about that? <laughs> what, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Let me try that again. Yet these held familiar. Fam familiar. So I said it right the first time and I can't do it. Yet these held familiar. <laughs> 
<laughs> familiar familiarity. Yeah, this hell familiarity beyond us burns. Father, the <laughs> <laughs> the woman spoke in the Zoran tongue through her gills. The Highland language could be would be useless without air to expel from her lungs. Her scarred mirror grinned in response, dimming the light source to reveal that it was a gnarled wooden staff, a pale blue orb set atop it, which bore the emblem of the gold goddess Nero. Yes, Zoimo, it is I. <laughs> <laughs> Zymo? <laughs> uh, uh, I was trying to do the impression, not pronounce it. Okay, fine, I'll do it again. <laughs> Since you have issue. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, Zemo. <laughs> it is I. <laughs> 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 End oh. post. <laughs> okay. I, I wish I could read the next post just so I could do that voice more, but unfortunately, I don't have time for that. Thoughts on that? <laughs> um, the podcast or your reading? <laughs> My reading. Uh, again, you never disappoint. <laughs> no. Thank you for that. <laughs> And on that rather always silly note, always oh, rather... one other thing. What? I, I may envision that last voice as the way Caden sounds from now on. <laughs> Just because. I, I, I kind of thought Drag King Granny Mickey Mouse would be the way you, vo- you pictured Caden, but okay. Not really, no. <laughs> What's wrong with the way I talk? <laughs> you have a problem with cake and how do I No wonder he needs a wingman. Uh, yeah, hey, baby. Think. Would you like to touch my glowy stick? <laughs> Would you like to taste my telescope? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> as if this couldn't get any better, that is the end of the ROH podcast. As always, I'm Caden Katanis, and I would like to thank Mana and Rio for joining me. Thank you for listening. I hope you were in amused for a few minutes. If not, too bad. So sad. Get the hell out of here. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>